Alright, so you decided to continue on with one of my videos. This is a year 11 and year 10, year 12 trigonometry. If you didn't get the first one, then don't try this second one. Unless you really want to try something really hard. Alright, let's find the sine rule first. The sine rule is for those triangles that don't have 90 degrees. Alright, that do not have 90 degrees. The ratio ones, they have to have 90 degrees, otherwise they won't work. These ones, they don't have to. And now let's look at the formula. The formula says that sine A over A, I'll use capitals and small letters to make it clearer, sine B over B is the equal sign. So sine A equals sine B, which equals sine D over D. Alright? Now let's make this side. This side equals B. That side equals A. So that would be a little b, that would be little a, and that would be a little d. That would be big D. Alright? Now, since we need to find, let's say, angle A. Alright? We would say sine 80 over 5, that equals a sine d over d. That's the big D, and that's the small d, and that's the big D. And therefore, it would be sine 80 over 5 equals, let's say you want to find A, you go sine A over little a, equals sine A over little a. The little a is 3, so we can scratch that and make it a 3. How do you solve this? Well, you use trigon, well, not trigonometry, sorry, you use algebra again. You times 3 on both sides, and so you're left with sine a equals 3 sine 80 over 5. Alright? Now, if you remember from the trigonomic ratios, how I told you how to find an angle, you do the inverse thing again. So, it w the whole thing would be a little bit complicated. It would be sine minus 1, 3 sine 80 over 5 equals A. You type that into your calculator, and once again, don't forget to press the degrees, minutes, and seconds button, which is next to Hype on the Casio FX82MS calculator. Alright, that basically sums up the sign rule. I'm not sure if you got any of that. If you didn't, then, well, try to review this video from the start. Okay? That's the sign rule in well, approximately three minutes now. Let's move on to the cosine rule. Cosine rule is a way more difficult because you have to actually remember it instead of just bluffing. <laughs> All right, it is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two b c cos a. You get that? A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two b c cos a. There's the triangle which explains it. Uh, let's see if I can... There we go. Alright, that means that squared equals that squared plus that squared minus 2 times that times that cos A. Well, times cos A. Okay, let's put that into a real triangle now. That's 80 degrees, 60 degrees, and 40 degrees. 12 and 9. To solve this, we'd use the co cosine rule. a squared, that equals that, equals b squared, 9, plus c squared, which equals 12. So a squared equals 9 squared plus 12 squared minus 2bc minus 2 times 9 times 12 times cos a times cos 60, which is a, because it's opposite. And that one's the a, remember? Alright, so that's basically how you do it, and then you get a squared equals da 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 da, whatever number it is, and then you take the root of that to find out what normal a is. So you take the root of that as well, you get a equals root da 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 da. Forget that one. Alright, now remember that you have to put a plus or a minus in front of that, because you don't know. 
you have to put a plus or a minus in front of that because you don't know if it's positive or a negative. All right. And since you have to do that, well, actually, you don't really have to because this is a distance. And so the minus wouldn't really count for anything. But remember, if you're taking the root of something, you always have to put the plus and minus. Just a little reminder of something else. Well, that basically sums up trigonometry. I could go a little bit further, but a bit tired. I guess I'll see you. Well, won't actually see you. You'll see me some other day. Bye.